Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You are tuned in to your second episode of Afro Beauty Consumer and this time around we are going to be commenting on making use of shading, complimenting, and enjoying Essence Cosmetics. Now I first found Essence Cosmetics back when I was in high school. I started high school in this country in 2011. I never really noticed them in the United States, um, but then again I also wasn't checking for them at the time. Um, so right now, I've been using them, I would say, for a good seven years. And at this point, I haven't left my house with at least one Essence product in my handbag. Usually, it's their eyebrow pencil. If not that, then totally their nail polish. And that's really kind of been what's been keeping me strong and, and loyal to the brand for the past few years. But, you know, there have been some major changes. For the past seven years, you know, when I first met the brand, I was used to their branding that included a illustration versus actual real people. When I first met the brand, Instagram wasn't as big as it is today and we really didn't get to see who was using it. And now they've got an entire ad campaign that's going on featuring quite a number, or featuring about four um, South African influencers, South African beauty influencers, on top of the fact that they have a very strong presence throughout most of YouTube ZA beauty content creators videos. So stay tuned, I hope you enjoy. First of all, I hope you subscribe, and if you haven't found a video of mine that you've liked, I hope that this is the one. Otherwise, please do like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends, because that's really what this whole thing is all about. Anyway, enjoy, I will see you at the end. Bye. I've done most of my face off camera because really the focus here for these particular essence products that I intend to use will be located in this general region. So I'm going to start with my eyebrows, then we're going to switch over into the eyeshadows and that's really where my, you know, essence product usage kind of extends. I don't really use a lot of their face products to be very honest. I'm just not all the way impressed. I've swatched a few items. And it's just not for me. As well. Anyway, we're just going to get right on into it. And I'm going to start with my eyebrows. So to be honest, actually, the first Essence Cosmetics product I ever used were eyebrow related. So when I was in high school, obviously, I didn't really see them in the United States when I was living there. But the first products that really struck my interest was during a time when eyebrows were like a thing everywhere in the world so you know there's that whole eyebrows on fleek thing and for me you know the cheapest eyebrow product was essence cosmetics the pencil back then i would say this was about 2011 2012 the the pencil was like 30 bucks right and you know i used to just get it once every I'd say three or four to six months and it would last you know the the nice thing about the essence products is that they're really really affordable now that's I think probably what saves the brand overall because you know for example when I show you guys the eyeshadows some people really hate fallout and they hate kickback in the shadows but you get what you pay for, you know? And in some instances, you get more than what you pay for. So the Eyebrow Duo by Essence, I mean, I've been caught in the rain with this eyebrow pencil. I've been, you know, found to be like, like sweaty on a summer's day, and my eyebrows stay in place. So really, I can't complain too much because, you know, it does what, what it promises to do. And when it comes to like their, their eye products and their pencil products especially, they do a little bit more than what they promise, and, and that's always nice. When it comes to, however, the parts of the brand that I'm not fully, you know, moved, I think that's the right term, I'm not always moved by, the parts of the brand that I'm not always moved by have more to do with their face products, and sometimes, like, the imagery that comes with the brand, like in, in all honesty. So while I was in high school, when I first encountered Essence Cosmetics, there was just, first of all, Instagram wasn't as big as it is now, but you know, the 
big brands were all on Instagram. Essence was not. And up until recently, granted they've had a redesign, um, not a redesign, well, a bit of a redesign. They've had, you know, they've launched this new campaign with South African influencers and I really appreciate that because to me what that says is that they are attuned or in tune with you know the beauty community this side so I'm not one of them but for me I'm not gonna purchase a product until I've seen a particular beauty you know uh, content producer use it and that's more so to do with like I want their opinion on shade or if, if you know me and that beauty producer are a shade match I want their opinion on how to use it and, and like instructions pretty much you know and their newest rebrand has created a space where now they have some of the biggest um, youtubers in or not just youtubers but the biggest beauty influencers in South Africa that have real influence I, I'd like to say um, you know promote as part of their latest um, campaign so uh, the biggest example I would have to say would be Michelle. Michelle has over, actually just reached over a hundred thousand uh, subscribers on YouTube, and she produces content that anybody can kind of follow along with. It's not super super um, difficult to watch. It's definitely like about her, but it's nice to see her on that campaign because what it means is that you know she's speaking that she's then speaking to her audience when she's saying all right I use a few products from essence and and this is how I use them this is how I make them work and that to me is very you know important um, however I will say at the same time Michali is on the lighter spectrum of things so with their latest brand um, ambassadorships the the push has been the fact that they've now launched newer um, more inclusive colors for their foundation you know there's there's more darker shades granted there are however the darkest person in that campaign is maybe a couple shades darker than me and by a couple I mean like two maximum three or four now in the imagery that they used so there's obviously a difference there's the images that are used on social media and then there's like the official campaign you know items the official campaign images are noticeably darker for example Nuza is quite light in complexion you know and once she's put on all of her contour and, and bronzer and things like that she you know her, her complexion warms up a bit but it's definitely still not as as deep as the edit of the campaign makes her look that's just something that I, I noticed in, you know, their new branding. And then aside from that, like if we're if I were to completely get over their most recent campaign and just kind of like focus on their pros and cons and, and what I thought about them before the campaign launched, I would literally have to say that I like the brand. I especially love the fact that they are it's not that I love the fact that they're overseas brand, but they're a foreign brand, technically, they're from the UK, and they've made it, you know, their business to ensure that their products are available to South Africans of all income groups. Literally speaking, the reason why it was so easy for me to find them in high school and, and adopt them as my eyebrow, you know, product of choice was because I didn't have no money and I could afford it. You know, and not just that, but the fact that, okay, granted, I might not use the foundations, but, you know, for, let's say there's a professional who's just starting out at work, doesn't know a thing about makeup and wants to learn. That is the brand to purchase and to, to grow with and, you know, to do all of that jazz with because in essence, the, <laughs> in essence, in essence, the whole goal is the fact that you know, beauty is now accessible. Makeup is accessible. Essence Cosmetics is affordable. Like their their cheapest item is probably thirty something rand. Their most expensive item is maybe like a hundred and something rand. And that says a lot. And and, and it's not just you know, um, their pencils that are the cheaper items, but their eyeshadow singlets. Their you know their eyebrow pencil, okay cool, the the accessories that come with, 
you know, the brand are also quite inexpensive. And to me, that says something. So obviously it, it's not formulated to be a luxury brand. I don't think anybody assumes that when they think about Essence Cosmetics, but the fact that at the price that they're offering, you're still, you're not exactly getting a, a, a podunk, don't nobody care about it, it don't work product. You're getting a, a pretty good product for the amount of money that you're paying. But I think one of the best moments as somebody who loves beauty products and who loves makeup is when I was at KFC, don't judge, I was at KFC and I was really hungry and I noticed in South Africa a lot of um, cashiers have a really bad rep for having terrible eyebrows and this particular cashier did not have terrible eyebrows she had really nice eyebrows and I'm not I'm surprised I'm saying it's surprised because that's not exactly something that we always expect from them you expect them to have like the angry you know, a double M style eyebrows, but this woman had beautiful brows. And she was then telling me about her dreams of becoming a makeup artist and how she was using YouTube to, you know, to, to, to learn. And I thought, to, to think about it, the products that she would be able to afford, Essence is one of them. So it was just a really nice moment between the two of us and then we ended up exchanging our favorite YouTubers our favorite um, South African YouTubers in particular. Um, and it just made sense. Like to me, if you can't have a moment with somebody else about what you enjoy or, you know, about makeup and, and, and be able to know that like, I can afford this and, and we can make recommendations on how to use it together, then it's not really all that fun. It's not all that communal. Um, however, as much as they've made improvements over the years, Essence in the beginning, before this latest campaign that they've launched with South African influencers, I didn't feel represented. You know, they had this thing of like, what's the, what's, what's the word for it? Not a book, but um, a cartoon, like an illustration. They had, instead of having actual people using their products, they branded the company and they branded the makeup with this illustration of this very tanned white woman with long hair and it just didn't make sense to who they were selling products to. Like, if they were gonna be like, okay, we're only selling products to very, very, very fair-skinned South Africa, damn near white South Africans, then it would make complete sense. But I also just have just never understood this thing of Brands coming to SA and forgetting that the super majority of this country is black. Not black like somebody who's racially ambiguous, but black as in very dark skinned, noticeably black, or maybe not very dark skinned, but like deeper complexion and, and noticeably black. Like there's no ambiguity about which race they belong to. And then brands will come and bring, you know, less than what they should be providing for this particular market. I've never understood that. And so before their latest, you know, campaign, I've always wondered why, why not have images or, or, or ambassadors, quote unquote, that look like the general populace of the country that you're trying to sell makeup to, you know? So that's why this latest, um, this latest improvement is really, really important. But above all else, I think the thing that I love the most about the brand is that it's affordable. So my eyebrow duo pencil that I used to do my eyebrows was about 34 bucks. This is like an, the Essence Must Haves palette, palette. So in Essence, it comes with like four blank spots and you can purchase, you can then purchase four um, eyebrow or eyeshadow singles for 34 grand or so. And don't get me wrong, some of them, terrible color payoff. Like as a black girl, don't buy them. Some of like the yellow one, don't do it. Um, some of them just don't do it. Other ones, you can finesse it if you have enough base on to like really get that color to come out. 
other ones just go on like a charm. For example, I purchased four, as you saw, and the four that I purchased were brown, purple, black, and silver. And that's because those particular colors show up magnificently on my skin, and I don't have to fight very hard, ouch, I don't have to fight very hard to get color payoff. And that to me is really important because, you know, if I start having to fight with my makeup, then it's really useless. Once again, though, as you guys can see as I'm working, there's a lot of fallout. That's why I put, um, that's why I put that layer of powder. Um, I think the only, the other thing about the brand is that packaging-wise, it's cute. Um, if there's one thing that this brand does really well with, it's eye products. I can't speak much for their face products, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not always a fan. Even their skin products, or so technically their eyeshadows and things like that, like I'm not always a fan. But if there's one product that never disappoints me, it's anything that has to do with a pencil or like a liner. Alright, now that's my finished look. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as you were here, I hope that you took notice of some things that you might want to use for yourself. Otherwise, I will see you on the next episode of Afro Beauty Consumer. Let me know in the comment section below whether or not you want to see more affordable brands. For instance, the first episode was Fenty, and this episode is Essence Cosmetics. Also, let me know which brands in particular you want me to use for this particular series. I hope you like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you found moments that you really, really enjoyed and that you were able to take note of some products that you can potentially add to your own um, makeup routine. Regime. So let me know in the comment section below what you thought and I hope to see you in the next episode of Afro Beauty Consumer. Until then, bye!